Hello, what's up YouTube photographer Ronnie Sweet and I'm in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to do skin retouching using only the mixer brush tool and the image you're going to be using was taken by Canoni Studios so this is the image that we're going to be dealing with and I can show you a quick before and after for the skin retouching so let me just zoom in you can see that I use only the mixer brush tool and I got and also retained the skin textures within the skin of the model right here you can see the original skin texture is still retained but i i only use the mr brush tool when i was retouching this very image so i'm just going to delete this and we're going to be learning about frequency separation from the very start to the very end so what you have to take into consideration or know about frequency separation it is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer usually we have the textures and in the low frequency layer we only have the colors or the skin tones of the image so we're just going to create those two layers by coming to the background layer and simply pressing ctrl j or you can use command j and press it twice then after creating those two layers we're going to name this into low and you're going to name this into high so some people prefer to call this the textures and they prefer to call the low frequency layer the colors so what you want to do you only want to retain the colors in the low frequency layer so just come and select the low frequency layer and now hide the high frequency layer then you're going to come to filter blur and come to gaussian blur right here so this is the most important step for your frequency separation so what we tend to achieve on this very low frequency, we only want to eliminate the textures from the skin and only remain with the colors. So what you have to do in this preview window, we have the zoom in and zoom out options for uh, zooming in and looking for an area that has prominent skin textures than the rest of the skin. So you can click to move around the image. So with this Gaussian blur window, you can now zoom in. So what you tend to achieve, we want to eliminate the textures from the low frequency layer. So simply left click and drag and start dragging the radius up. So you have to drag it up, up the point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image. So at around 6, that is when the details or the textures are just starting to get lost from the image. So you have to stop at that point when the textures are just starting to disappear or get lost from the image. So this radius shouldn't be crammed because your photos or your images may be having a varying skin texture and maybe the photos may be taken using a camera that has a different megapixel count. So make sure you don't cram this. Just what you have to take into consideration is you only have to make sure that the textures are just starting to disappear depending on the image that you have. So I'm going to be using a radius of 6 that because that is when I'm just starting to close out on the textures in this image and I'm just going to simply click OK. So when you click on OK, you can notice that the overall image now tends to look a little bit blurry. So what we want to do, we want to come and get the textures that we eliminated from the low frequency layer and now paste them into the high frequency layer. So we're just going to activate or turn back the high frequency layer and now select it. Then simply come to image and come down to apply image right here. So when you come to apply image, you have the apply image window or dialog box showing right here. So just come and make sure you select the low frequency because we are going to be stealing the textures from the low frequency layer. And remember, the textures we eliminated from this layer, the ones we are going to be pasting in the high frequency layer. And after selecting it, make sure the channel is RGB and if at all you have 8 right here, it means your image is 8-bit. And if at all you have 16, it means that your image is a 16-bit image. So this is what you have to take into consideration. So if at all you have a 16-bit image, just come and make sure the blend mode you're using is add. And make sure the opacity is 100%. Preserve transparency and mask and check. The scale is trend offset 0. And make sure you turn on the invert option. And you can see that the textures are on this gray kind of layer. And we it is now lacking the colors then if at all you are having eight right here make sure you select the low frequency layer and you don't turn on the invert option 
So make sure the invert is not checked. And make sure the blend mode this time around is going to be subtract. Opacity at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. The scale is trend offset 128 and you'll have the same results like we had for the 16-bit version. So for my case, I have a 16-bit image. So I'll be using a blend mode of add. Opacity at 100%. The scale is 2 offset 0. Preserve transparency and mask are not checked. This so I turn on the invert option and I'm just going to simply hit OK. So after I have done this, we want a blend mode that is going to eliminate the gray color from the overall image. So that blend mode is known as linear light. So just come to the blending options right here and scroll down and you look for linear light. And that blend mode is going to take out the gray color from the overall image and it's going to reveal back our information or the original information within the image. So after doing that, we want to prove that we have successfully divided the frequencies of the image. So we are basically going to left click and click on both layers by pressing Ctrl or Command and clicking Ctrl G on the keyboard. Then for Mac, you can use Command G on the keyboard. Put these two layers in a group. And you're going to double click to rename that to frequency separation. So when you turn this on and off, you can see there is no difference between the original background image and our separated image. So initially, we have just divided the image into the textures and the colors. So back to the major emphasis for today's story, which is skin retouching using the mixer brush tool. So usually when you're doing skin retouching, you always want to make sure that we are blending the transitions within the skin color or the skin tones of the image. So by that we want a tool that is known as the Mr. Brush tool that is going to help us blend the transitions within the skin color or skin tone. So at the end of it all, we have uniform transitions and a uniformity within the skin tone transitions in the image. So we are going to come to the low frequency layer now select it. And after selecting it, remember this color has the skin tones that we want to blend and create that nice and smooth transition within the skin tone transition so after selecting the low frequency layer you're going to come under the brushes simply right click and get the mixer brush tool then if at all you have an older version of photoshop you may find your mixer brush tool down here so just look for it and select it so this is the mixer brush tool so above here we have the settings for the mixer brush tool and by settings i mean the effects that we want the mixer brush tool to apply to the image as we're trying to blend the transitions within the skin. So make sure you come right here and make sure the hardness is at 0% by clicking on the drop down icon right here. And make sure clean brush is selected. And also make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is also selected because as you're retouching, we want the Photoshop application to automatically clean the brush because as you're blending skin tones or the skin color within the image we want or we tend to deal with different colors in the image so by this if at all i'm painting and i want to come to this area you can see that it has a different area or a different color from this very area so we want photoshop every single time we, are, we stop blending here and we come here the brush is going to automatically be cleaned so make sure the weight is 9%, the load of 75%, the mix at 90 and the flow of 100% and make sure sample oils is not checked because when you check this option, it means that the brush is also going to be copying information from the texture layer and painting them into the low frequency. Remember, we only want to deal with the colors or the skin tones that are part of the low frequency layer. So make sure sample oils is not checked. So after doing this, the next thing is going to be application of the Mr. Brush tool on the image. So if at all your Mr. Brush tool is showing this cross icon, make sure you press the caps lock key on the keyboard and that is going to get the Mr. Brush tool looking like the default version. Then also, as you're retouching, always make sure you play around with different sizes of the Mr. Brush tool. For example, if at all I want to work on a very small area, it means I'll have to adjust my Mr. Brush tool to be as small as that area so that I can work on a tiny area. Then if at all you want to work on a bigger area, you can increase on the size and work on that big area. 
then also as you're retouching always make sure you don't zoom all the way in because when you zoom all the way in you won't be able to see the uneven skin tone transitions within the image so always make sure you retouch at a distance and in this way you can see the uneven skin tone transitions so enough of the settings for the mixer brush tool the next thing is going to be the right application of the mixer brush tool and the image so the best way to do this if at all you want to see the uneven skin tone transitions just come and click on the high frequency and now hide it so that you're not distracted by textures within the image and you are only looking at the colors in the image so with the low frequency layer selected right now we're going to start applying the mixer brush tool so how to do this always make sure to move the strokes of the mixer brush tool in the way a given area is shaped so for example on the cheekbone right here on the cheek area you can see that the colors are moving in this up down kind of movement so meaning i also have to move my mixer brush tool in this kind of direction so i'm just going to reduce on the size of the mixer brush tool and as you're blending make sure you keep within the borders or the boundaries of a given color and mix it alone and where it is transitioning for example from the midtones to the highlights simply reduce on the size and blend that border so that is what we are going to be doing so i'm just going to start blending you can see i'm mixing this color alone and you can see the trick about this or the secret about using this technique is the more plastic the image is looking the better the results the results at the end of it all because when you turn on the texture layer you can notice that the textures are still intact but the transitions within the skin color are also perfected so i'm just going to turn this off and select the low frequency and simply start blending so i'm just going to be blending or evening out the transitions within the skin area and like i said you have to move the strokes of mr brush tool in that kind of direction of the way an area has been shaped so that you keep the original shape of the model's face so you can see that this highlight is also going to be mixed alone and blended alone and where it is transitioning from one area to another just come and mix that border so when i come and return on the texture layer you can see the textures are still intact within the image and you can see before and after for just using the mr brush tool so i'm just going to be working on the rest of the image and i'll be forwarding this and i'll see you later on in the blemish removal process for this very image so i'm just going to turn this off and i'm going to continue blending hello welcome back and you can see i'm now done using a mr brush tool and i've tried to blend every uneven skin tone transition within the image so you can see a quick before and after but we have also retained the original and natural skin textures within the image so the next thing that we want to do is removing the blemishes or skin imperfections from this very image so in order to remove blemishes you are simply going to come and select the layer that contains the blemishes or the textures so remember Blemishes are part of textures within the image. So select the high frequency layer that is the texture layer. And after selecting, just come and get the clone sample tool. That is the tool I prefer to remove blemishes. Then also with hardness of 0%, the mode of normal opacity and the flat 100%. Make sure the sample is current layer because you only want to sample information that is the texture information in the high frequency layer. And after doing that, you're just going to simply zoom all the way in so when you're removing blemishes make sure that you zoom all the way in so that you can remove the blemishes better so after doing that how to remove a given blemish you simply hold down the option or alternate key on the keyboard so option for mac and alternate for windows then you hold it down and simply left click on an area that is close to the blemish and simply 
release the alternate and simply left click over the blemish to get rid of it so that is how to clean up or remove the blemishes from the image using the clone stamp tool so always make sure that the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove so you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard to increase or decrease on the size of the clone stamp tool so you hold on the alternate or option then simply left click on an area that is clean that is close to the blemish and simply release the alternate and simply left click over the blemish and that is going to eliminate or get rid of that blemish in that given area so i'm just going to be forwarding this process because i don't want the tutorial to be a long one so i'm just going to clean up and i'll be seeing you later on as you're doing the eye whitening Hello, welcome back and now you, ca you can see I'm done removing uh, the blemishes or the skin imperfections from this very image. So let's do a little bit of eye cleaning up for the eyes and get rid of these veins within the eyes of the model. So what you're going to do, I'm just going to close this and create a stamp visible layer by pressing shift alternate control E on the keyboard or you can as well use shift alternate command E. So if at all you're using Windows, you can use Shift Alternate Control E on the key on the keyboard to create a stamp visible layer. Then if at all you're using Mac, you can use Shift Option Command E on the keyboard. So hope I'm clear about creating a stamp visible layer. So I'm just going to create a stamp visible layer. And how to clean up these veins? We're just going to copy and paste over these veins to Try and get rid of them so alternate to copy it is the same process that we use for removing uh, the blemishes within the skin area of a model so just going to come and copy and clean up most of the veins don't remove all of them just remove uh, the prominent veins and you can set we are now done removing the prominent veins within the eye so you're just going to we are going to be doing a little bit of eye whitening so just going to come to the hue and saturation adjustment layer and simply desaturate this up to around negative 82 and with the white lamas selected we are just going to press ctrl i or command i on the keyboard then we are going to come and get the normal brush tool make sure the hardness is zero percent or pass in the flat hundred percent right here and we're going to make sure we have black and white right here so you can reset if at all you have any other colors by clicking on these two boxes right here, the tiny ones. Or you can switch between black and red by using X on the keyboard or you can use this arrow key. So with white as a foreground color, we're going to be revealing what was hidden behind the black mask, hence whitening the eye. So you can increase on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. So that is going to help us do a little bit of the eye whitening and reduce on the amount of the reds within the eyes so you're basically desaturating the colors that are within the white area of the eye so that it can remain white in color so you can see we are done whitening the eyes by using that nice and beautiful technique so after we have done this the next thing that we want to do is saving the image so i won't do the fly away hair removal that will be a tutorial for another day. So if at all you want to save the image after retouching, simply come to File, Export, and come to Export As. So we want to save a sharp image or a photo that won't change in color when we post it on social media or when we print it out. So make sure the format is JPEG, the quality at 100%. Make sure you select by cubic sharper because we want Photoshop to sharpen the photo for us and add that kind of sharpening for screen effect when we save it so also make sure the color spaces convert to srgb and also embed the color profile so make sure you, che you check or tick these options right here and simply cl click on export and choose a location where you want to save the image so basically this is how to retouch your images using 
the mixer brush tool from the very start to the very end so you can see a quick before and after for the retouched image so this is the before and after before after and i hope you have learned something new from this tutorial and if at all you haven't hit the like button on this video simply hit the like button and also subscribe this channel for more content ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more tutorials on, on this channel and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating